Time for us to take a bite out of OSPF. And in the first couple of videos here, we're going to be going over some fundamentals of theory, not just of OSPF, but of link state protocols in general. And before we dive in, I want to have a quick word with you, especially those of you who haven't seen OSPF in action yet, or maybe it's totally new to you. Like I said, the first couple of videos here are a little heavy on theory. And what I have done to help illustrate some of that theory is I have built an OSPF network off camera and we're going to use one or two show commands to show you exactly what's going on with some of the concepts that I'm going to describe. You do not have to know OSPF configuration yet. And like I said, I've actually configured it off camera because the topology doesn't matter. It's strictly for illustrative purposes. And once we're done tackling the theory, we're going to see all of this theory in action on the largest OSPF network I've ever built in a CCNA course. This is material I've put in the NP before, but I'm bringing it to you here in the NA course and you'll get a lot out of it. But again, don't be too hard on yourself here in the first couple of videos if this is new to you. It's a lot to absorb. And again, I will use a couple of OSPF show commands to show you what the theory is talking about. But the actual configuration, we will do that from the very beginning, from scratch, as I like to say, later in this part of the course. Now, as far as link state protocols go, you really have two of them out there today. OSPF and IS to IS. And I know there's no two in the middle of that, but you do pronounce it IS to IS. Now, it's primarily used by service providers, IS to IS that is, and you'll find it on other Cisco exams, but it's not even in the CCNN, CCNP routing and switching track at this point, and you're not going to see it on the CCNA routing and switching exam except the mention of it being a link state protocol. That's it. The actual configuration and operation is far beyond the scope of the CCNA routing and switching exam. OSPF sure isn't that way, though. You're going to see plenty of OSPF in production networks and with your CCNA exam. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time here together with OSPF labs, including some brand new ones and the theory as well. Now we're going to talk about link state protocol concepts here and talk about them and compare them to our distance vector protocols like, say, RIP because there's a reason that we needed to develop protocols after RIP came along. And one reason, one major drawback of distance vector protocols is that default behavior of sending a routing update on a regular schedule. Ugh. That was a fine idea at the time, but it really doesn't serve us well right now, especially when RIP speaking routers generate updates every 30 seconds. And frankly, if your network is changing every 30 seconds, you probably shouldn't be watching this. You should be at work. Seriously. Every 30 seconds. Totally unnecessary in a stable network. And, you know, the thing is, too, it's a full update. Now, RIP, again, when it sends this routing update, it's going to be advertising every RIP-derived network it knows about, even if it just told the same router about it 30 seconds ago. And again, the reason I, I emphasize full updates here is that when a RIP-enabled router sends that RIP update, again, the update contains all of the RIP routes that router knows about. So why am I saying that again? Here's why. If the sending router knows more of, knows of more than 25 routes via RIP, the update is going to require multiple packets because a RIP update packet can only contain 25 routes. So if you're looking at a router that knows about 51 RIP-derived routes, then every time it sends an update, that's going to be three update packets. And, you know, it's a waste of energy on each end because, you know, they, they have to be created, they have to be packaged, then they have to be transmitted, they're going to suck up bandwidth, and then the sighing router there at the other end is going to be unpacking them and saying, hey, nothing changed in the last half minute. And then by that time, you know, other updates are on the way. So RIP, not terribly efficient as far as that goes. Now, EIGRP is a big step forward. Uh, it's an EIGRP known as a hybrid. It's got some link state characteristics, some distance vector characteristics. Now, an EIGRP update is a full routing update only after an adjacency is built between two routers. Much more coming up about adjacencies here in the OSPF section. But what you just need to know about it now, it's an agreement on certain rules between two routers, and they form this neighbor relationship or this adjacency. Well, with EIGRP, EIGRP will send a full update out right after that adjacency is built, and that makes perfect sense. But after that, you don't really need full updates all the time. So after that, the routing updates reflect only changes to the network, and they're only sent out when there is a change to the network, not every 30 seconds or something crazed like that. 
Now, the reason I bring these up is to compare it to the operation of OSPF because a link state protocol operation, as far as the routing updates go, it's totally different. Now, they will form adjacencies. Link state routers must form adjacencies before any of this happens. But what link state routers do is, is they exchange link state updates, LSUs, which contain link state advertisements, LSAs. And LSA is a term you run into a lot. These the LSAs are placed into a link state database. And I'm going to show you one here in a moment with show IP OSPF database. And this will be about the smallest OSPF database you ever see because I built a little baby network. And we'll take a look at the database too in the other labs when we're building the network and you'll see how large they get. Thing is, once the OSPF network has reached a state of convergence, that is, they have agreed on neighbors, they've agreed on all this stuff, then the routers have synchronized link state databases. And here's what a database looks like. And again, a very small one, pardon me for being off screen there. And you can see I just ran the command show IP OSPF database. It's got a little information there about OSPF router with ID 10111. We're definitely going to see where that value came from and also a process ID. But you see, this is what OSPF works with in its raw state. This is, in a way, a routing table. And if you're like me, or even if you're unlike me, you're looking at this and thinking, I'm glad I don't have to make heads or tails out of any kind of route here. You know, where are the routes coming from? Well, the thing is, with that database, the, the Dijkstra algorithm, the Dijkstra algorithm, the SPF algorithm, that's my favorite pronunciation of it, SPF, but it's also known as the shortest path first algorithm, or simply SPF. And it runs against the contents of the database we just saw, and that creates the OSPF routing table. And while this may not look too friendly to us, this does. This is a lot more friendly, and it looks a lot more like the routes, of course, that we've seen with RIP and with static routing. So again, you can go a long time, frankly, in OSPF without actually looking at the database. We'll do it a couple times during our labs, but this, of course, is what you and I, the network admins, are much more concerned about. We want to see that OSPF routing table. So that's how the routes get there into that routing table. The contents, again, of the database are taken. The SPF algorithm runs against it, and then we have what we consider to be a much more friendly routing table. Now, the beauty of this algorithm is that the recalculation of routes due to a network change is so fast that routing loops literally have no time to form. And you got to admit, that's pretty fast. Now, a comparison here to EIGRP, EIGRP calculates backup routes in advance. You know, they're called feasible successors. Your primary routes are called successors. So in EIGRP, if your primary route disappears, that secondary route is just ready to put right in the table. OSPF doesn't do that, but the algorithm, again, is lightning fast, and routing loops are considered to have absolutely no time to form. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at these LSA sequence numbers, because, you know, when routers are exchanging any kind of information, the router that's receiving it has got to do some kind of check and say, okay, you know, is this the most recent information or do I already have the most recent information and I'm getting something old? We'll talk about those LSA sequence numbers coming up next.